So without further ado, I'd like to get into today's session um, on Review Manager 5 for new authors. Today's session is going to be led by John McDonald. And here's a picture of John to let you know that that disembodied voice actually does belong to a real person. John's the managing editor of the Cochrane Inflammatory Bowel Disease and Functional Bowel Disorders Review Group. He's based at the University of Western Ontario in London, a position he's held for the past 11 years. He has over 23 years of medical research experience. And trust me, if you have any questions about Cochrane or systematic reviews, John's definitely the man to go to. We'll give his email at the end of today's presentation. And John's already said that he'd be happy to answer any questions about Review Manager that you have at the end of this session through email. So please don't worry if you don't have a chance to get your question answered in today's session. You can certainly send him a message with any questions as a follow-up. So John, over to you to get, to get today's session started. Uh, thank you very much, Aaron. In this webinar, we're going to have a close look at Review Manager, or RevMan, the Cochrane Collaboration software for producing systematic reviews. I'd like to take a moment and uh, acknowledge our funders. Funding for the Cochrane Inflammatory Bowel Disease and Functional Bowel Disorders Review Group, including my position, has been provided by the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, including the Institute of Infection and Immunity and the Institute of Nutrition, Metabolism, and Diabetes. And we also receive funding from the Ontario Ministry of Health and Long Care. I'd like to start with a brief poll. I'm going to turn things over to uh, Aaron. And uh, just a second. Hi, everybody. So we've now reset the poll. Please go ahead and take a moment. Is RevMan new to you? A for completely new. B for I have worked with RevMan 5. C for what is RevMan 5? So take a moment, and we'll just wait for those responses to come through. I see a few people still coming through. There we go. All righty. So where we're at so far? There you go, John. Back to you. Thank you, Aaron. It looks like I have my work cut out for me. This is a pretty uh, general introduction, but we're going to cover a lot of stuff. So let's get started. The purpose of this session is to briefly introduce you to RevMan and also to the Archie database, two important resources that you're going to need to use to write and submit your Cochrane review for publication. I'll show you how to access them, the role of each one, and how the two are related. Following this, I'll go through some of the main features of RevMan. As I've said, RevMan is the Cochrane collaboration software for writing systematic reviews. You must use RevMan to write your review as RevMan is also used to submit your review for editorial review and publishing. RevMan is available to download free of charge from the IMS website as listed on this slide and is free for Cochrane authors and academic use. Information is available on the website for anyone that wants to use RevMan for a commercial purpose. We'll talk about RevMan in more detail in a few moments, but first I'm going to draw your attention to Archie. Archie is the central database that stores all drafts of Cochrane reviews published and in progress, as well as the contact information of all contributors to the Cochrane collaboration. When you want to work on your review, you will need to access the draft file in the Archie database and download it to begin work. When you've finished work, you need to upload the file back to the Archie database for storage. Archie is used by your review group to access your review for editorial and peer review, and the Cochrane Library is also published directly from the Archie database. However, as an author, you can do everything you need from RevMan with an internet connection. You don't need to open the Archie database directly. You will need a username and password so that RevMan can access your reviews, and if you haven't already done so, you need to contact your review group to get an Archie user account and password so that you're able to check out your review in RevMan from, from the Archie database. It is possible to log into the Archie database using the web interface at archiecochrane.org. Most authors don't need to use this interface. You can't edit your review this way, although you can see read-only versions, and you can edit your contact details. One particularly useful feature is the uh, forgot your password link. In just a second here. I just want to emphasize this. If you forget your password, you can always come to the Archie uh, 
web page here and reset it at any time. This is how the process of accessing your review works. First, your review group creates the review file in Archie. It is important to note that you cannot yourself create a review file. It has to be your managing editor that does this, or the system won't recognize your file as an official Cochrane review. Your managing editor will let you know when the review file has been created in Archie and is ready for you to work on. And they'll help you set up your username and password. In Redman, you will enter your username and password and check out the file from Archie, just like checking out a book from the library. The file will be downloaded to your computer and to Redman where you can start work. When you've finished working for the day, you should check the review back into Archie to be stored until the next time you work on it again. If you have co-authors who are working on the review with you, they can also check out the review from Archie and work on it and check it back in for you to see. Please note that only one author can check out the review at any time. It is really important that the latest version of the review should always be in Archie. First, it avoids confusion, confusion pardon me, about different versions of the review, whether it's versions edited by different co-authors or different versions you may have saved on your computer. You can always go to Archie to get the latest version. And at second, you always have a backup. So if you drop your laptop down the stairs, <laughs> you can get your file from your managing editor. When you start Redman, this is the first screen you'll see, giving you a few options to get started. In most cases, the first thing you'll want to do is check out one of your reviews from Archie. To do that, you would click on Go to My Reviews. I'll show you how to check out a review in a moment, but first I'm going to show you how to set things up properly by entering your username and password and your user details in Redman. Redman will ask you to enter your Archie username and password. If you wish, you can save your login details so that you don't have to do this each time. We only recommend you do this if you're the sole user of that computer. You can also enter and save your username and password anytime in Redman by going to the Tools menu and selecting Preferences and Connection. Once you have entered your username and password, you should check your connection. The user details feature attaches your user details to track changes or any notes that you add to the review. To enter your user details, you go to Tools, Preferences, and under General, you type your name. Now I'm going to go out and do our first Redman demonstration, so bear with me for a moment while I pull up Review Manager. Okay, we're now in Review Manager. First thing I'm going to do is go to Tools, Preferences, and under General, I'm going to type my name. And there it is. I didn't realize that it was still there. So we go to the Connection tab. And again, I'll just show you. You type in your username and your password. And then it's a good idea to test. But before that, I'm just going to show you that I'm on the training server because I'm going to be doing some changes to reviews, and I would rather not do that to published reviews. So just a moment. I'm going to test this. And the test is successful. It says, server replied, hello, John McDonald. This is the test server at training.archie.cochrane.org. Now I'm going to go back to my slides and go over a few more Revman features. Then we'll have another demonstration. Hang on for a moment. Hmm. Okay, here we go. This slide shows the My Reviews window. Having entered your password, Redman can show me a list of all the reviews I have access to. If you are an author of more than one review, they will all be listed. If I click on a review title, I can see the current status of that review, whether it's at the protocol or full review stage, who the other authors are, and what version I'm up to, and so on. It can also tell me if the review is available to be checked out from Archie or if someone else is using it. Importantly, if I forgot to check the review in last time I used it, Redman will tell me that the latest version is saved on my computer and show me exactly where it is. 
In the bottom right section, under tasks and progress, I can see where I'm up to in the review process, usually either drafting the protocol or review, but you might also be at the stage of responding to editorial or peer review feedback. To check out the review, you would just simply check, click on the check out button. You can also check out reviews from the file menu, which is what I usually do. In a few moments, I'm going to check out a review and show you some features of Redman. First, I'll review some of these features on slides. This is what Redman looks like when you open up the review in the current version 5.1. The left side of the screen is the outline pane, which lists all the steps standard uh, Cochrane review template. Sorry. If you select any of the titles in the outline pane, you will automatically see the relevant section on the right-hand side of the screen, the content pane. This is where all the work of the review is done. You can see here where the text can be written and edited, but at other times you'll see statistical analyses, tables, figures, or references. At the top of the screen, right here, you'll see all the functions that you need to help you write the review. There's a menu bar with drop-down functions. There's a toolbar to select the functions you'll frequently need. And in the outline pane here, there's another small toolbar. This one's used mostly for adding things and organizing the structure of your view. Another important feature I'd like to point out is right over here. In any part of Redman, if you're not sure what you should be doing in that section of the, of the review or how to use a feature, if you click on the question mark right here, you'll be taken to the relevant section of the online help. If you click the button with the little book, you will be taken to the relevant section of the Cochrane Handbook. Redman has a number of editing features. The text editor allows formatting, including subheadings, tables, numbered lists, bullet lists, and nested lists. There's a track changes and notes system that helps facilitate the task of multiple authors working together on a review. There's an undo system, which allows you to undo anything from small text edits to deletion of whole studies and comparisons. And believe me, that feature comes in handy. Uh, there's real-time spell checking to, to pre help, help prevent errors. And you can also reorganize your review using simple move and renumber functions, or uh, drag and drop, or copy and paste. The Cochrane Review Template over here, is composed of fixed and recommended subheadings. You can also add your own user-defined headings. You should check with your review group to see which recommended subheadings or user-defined headings you should use. This slide here shows the Track Changes feature, which you can activate from your toolbar over here or from the Tools drop-down menu. The track Changes is used when editing a review. I use it to show changes when copy editing a review that has been approved for publication. You may, use, you may wish to use this to show suggest, suggested changes to your co-authors. The notes feature can assist with drafting a review. These notes do not appear in the published version of the review. To click a note, you click on the note button in the outline pane, or you right click your mouse where you have your cursor in the text. You type your note in the box and then click close. This slide shows the notes box. If you hover over a note in the text, you can see it. it. You can also click on it and open it up to see who wrote it. Now I'm going to go back to Redman and do some demonstrations. Just bear with me for a moment while I pull it up. OK, the first thing I'm going to do is check out a review that I wish to, check, to work on. I'm going to go to the File menu, and I could either go to My Reviews or Check Out. Right now, I'm just going to try Check Out. Now, as you can see, I have access to a very large number of reviews. Right now, I have a hypothetical review called Drug X for Condition Y. And yes, I do wish to check it out. Now, if I go over here to Main Text and click on it, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to go to the background. Here in the background, as you see down here, are your recommended uh, heading, rec backgrounds to recommend it heading, and then these other ones here, description of condition, description of the intervention. These are recommended uh, subheadings. You can actually turn these off by right-clicking on them and deactivating it. 
And they will ask you, are you sure you want to deactivate this heading? I'm going to click yes. Then I'm going to realize, gee, that was kind of a dumb thing to do. So I'm going to go back over to undo, and I'm going to undo that change. Now I can show you the text editor. For example, I might want to add some secondary outcomes down here. So secondary outcomes, I'm going to add a bulleted list. Include clinical, oh, and to make sure I'm spelling OK, why don't we hit the spell checker there up in the list. Clinical remission, adverse events, and perhaps serious adverse events. So lots of things you can do with the text editor here. You wouldn't want to, but I mean, I can bold these. I can italicize them. I could add other numbered lists and add details A, B, and C. I can also add notes. Just hang on for a second. I'll go back up to the background. I've already added a note here, but let's add one here. So I'm right clicking. I'm going to add a note. This is a note to my co authors. This section needs some links to references. I'll close that note. When someone else checks out the review, they can hover over it and see the comment. They could open it right up, and you see when I add it my user features, you can see that John McDonald added this comment. So I'm going to show you the renumber function. I'm going to go down to some data and analyses here. And you notice I've set up the comparison drug X versus placebo. If you note here, I have comparisons 1.1, 1.4, and 1.6. And that really doesn't make any sense. I think what I did was I uh, deleted some of my outcomes without renumbering these. So I can go up into the toolbar right up here and renumber those. Now you see they're numbered 1.2, 1.1, and, uh, well, and 1.3. I can also move things. Let me move some references for you, just a moment. Earlier, I added some references to a section called classification pending. And I think I need to move these references to another part of the re review here. So I'm just going to go move. I'm going to move them to additional references. I'm just moving one at a time. And here we go. And now those uh, two references are now on additional references. I can show you how to copy and paste things, too. Let's say, for an example, I have an appendix that shows an OVID search strategy for Medline. And I want to create another appendix that shows a similar search strategy. Just maybe I could do a bit of editing to it. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back up here to uh, Appendices. What I did, by the way, is I right-clicked on this. Sorry, just a sec. I right-clicked. I went down to Copy. I copied it. Now I'm going to go back to Appendices, and I'm going to add an appendix. It's going to ask me what name I want to give it. I'm going to put Embase Search. Finish. And now I'm going to um, copy this search strategy here. And I just uh, highlighted it, and I'm going to go Control-C. I'm going to go down to Appendix 2, and I can insert those details there. And then I may wish to edit it and show my co-authors the edit. So I'm just going to do some track changes here. So I, you know, I don't need that line on the bottom. Or maybe, you know what, I'm just going to go up to the main text here and just show you how to use track changes in the text, which, of course, is the same thing. Background. I'm just looking at this sentence here. It says, condition Y is a serious disorder that makes people feel really, really sick. I feel that there's probably too many reallys there. So I'm going to get rid of one of them. And if you hover over this, you should be able to see that I made the change. Well, here, I'm going to look at an older change. I ah, see, yeah, I modified that one yesterday. OK, now I've showed you how to cut and paste. I'm going to just show you how to check this review back in. And one thing that's very important, you should be routinely saving your work every few minutes. 
That way, uh, you won't uh, lose something that you've been working on for quite a while. I'm going to check this back in, and then I'm actually going to check it back out again because I'm going to want to show you some stuff in a few moments. But this is a check-in. So I went to File, Check-in, and I usually enter the date under Description. And please note, don't click Next here. You only click Next when you want to submit your review for editorial and peer, peer review. Right now, I'm just going to click Finish. I get a message saying check-in completed and now the review's gone. I'm just going to check it out again quickly. This time I'll use my reviews. So drug X for condition Y, check out. We're back again and right now I'm going to go back to my slides. So bear with me for a moment. Okay. You will need to create a study ID for each included and excluded study in your review and for your other references as well. You can either add these references manually or you can import them from a text file from a program such as EndNote or from a text file you saved from Medline or PubMed. Just hang on for a moment, please. Ah, this is where you can add studies and references in the outline pane. This slide shows where you can manually enter a reference. On the right-hand side, you can click the Add Study button and then enter the study manually. This slide and the next one show how to import references from a text file. I'm going to show you how to do this live in a few moments, and you will receive the slides later, so don't worry about me going over this quickly. This slide reviews the procedures for citing a reference or a study in the text. I'm going to demonstrate this in just a moment. So bear with me while I pull up Redman again. OK, so now we're in here. Let's add a few references. I'm just going to go to uh, Studies and References, Included Studies, and I know off the bat that I'm actually missing one of my included studies, so I'm going to add that manually. So I click on Add Study. The study is Schwerl, S-C-H-E-R-L, 2009. I'm going to click Next, and we're going for published data only. This is a published manuscript. Next, there's the year. Next, I'm not going to add any identifiers right now. And then I'm going to click Finish. Now you'll notice, if I just show you the included studies here, we now have Ito, McDonald, and Sherl, but there's no details for either Ito or Sherl. But you know, I downloaded these studies from uh, PubMed just a while ago and saved them on my desktop. So I'm going to show you how to import them. You go to the File menu, down to Import, References. Now the Import Wizard comes up. I'll click Next. And I have uh, my Ito study here. I'm going to highlight it and click Open. And now it's opened up. I click Next. I saved it in PubMed Medline format. Next. I'm going to give it a destination. You can send it to any number of places, but we already have a destination for it. So I'm going to go Study, ITO. I'm going to click Next. And I, I have my reference, and I have my destination. I'm going to click Finish. And I've imported the reference. As you can see now, the, di the details for the ITO reference are published, or are there in Redman. I'm going to do the same for Sheryl. Just give me a moment. File, Import, References. The wizard comes up. Next. We're going to get Sheryl. Open. Next. Next. We're going to give it a destination. The correct one, I hope. Sheryl. Next. And click Finish. And now we have that reference added as well. Now, I'm going to just demonstrate how you cite references in the text of a Cochrane review. I'm just going to go back to my background here. And I left a note saying that this next one needs some links to references. So here I go. I'm going to add some references here. I'm going to go Insert Link. I right-clicked in the text. I put my cursor there. Insert Link. That must be an Other Reference. Pardon me. Other Reference. There's Anonymous, 1994. And now, I've added that reference to the text. I no longer need that. So I'm just going to get, I'm going to delete it. And as you can see, track changes is showing 
going to cut it out there. And I'm also going to get rid of these things here. Then I'm going to add Sheryl. So I'll right click, insert link. Sheryl's an included study, so we'll just put it right here. And you know, I'm just turning track changes off for a moment because I'm sure my co-authors really don't care about me adding these links here. There we go. So now I'm going to go back to the slides and show you some more Revman features. But first, I'm going to save my work. So bear with me for a moment here while I pull up Revman. I mean my slides. Pardon me. OK. Tables in Cochrane Reviews include the characteristics of included studies, excluded studies, studies awaiting classification, and ongoing studies, risk of bias tables, summary of findings tables, and additional tables which are user defined. The table of included studies, hmm, I can't seem to find my table of included studies. Oh, well. Uh, this slide here does show characteristics of included studies. And these tables describe the methods, participants, interventions, outcomes, and other important features, uh, which are sometimes listed in other notes. Uh, separate tables created for each study in your review. You can also add up to three user-defined categories to the characteristics table using the properties box, which is right here. Here's the properties box. It can be used to modify the characteristics table or the risk of bias table. And I'll tell you right now, as new authors, you will probably not need to modify any risk of bias tables. But here they are. The Cochrane Risk of Bias tool, of course, is used to assess the methodological quality of studies that are included in your review. The Risk of Bias table presents a description and judgment for seven quality domains, including out adequate allocation sequence, uh, sequence generation, blinding of participants and personnel, blinding of outcome assessment, incomplete outcome data, reporting bias, and other bias. Each item is judged by the details provided in the manuscript or with, by contact with the authors as being a low risk of bias, high risk of bias, or unclear risk of bias. And here's what the table would look like in RevMan 5.1. This slide shows the risk of bias properties box, which can be used to modify the risk of bias table. This slide shows what the excluded studies table looks like. Again, there's one table for each excluded study. These tables provide the reason why the study was excluded. And this slide shows what the awaiting assessment and ongoing studies tables look like. And this slide shows where you add additional tables in the content plane. Of course, you could add additional tables from the outline pane as well. Ah. And this slide shows a sample additional table. And you can click in these tables and, and just type in them, much like a, a Word document. Uh, in a moment, I'm just going to pull up Redman and show you a few more things. Bear with me for a moment, please. Hello, so now I'm going to uh, show you some uh, stuff about tables. If we go down to the characteristics of included studies table. I can click on the properties thing here, and I can add a user-defined category. Now, I'm not sure what you'd want to add here, but I think I may wish to describe some serious adverse events in these studies. So if I click OK, you'll see that this row has now been added to the table for all the studies. As you can see, the three included studies all have that. Now, I'm just going to quickly show you the risk of bias table. Like I said, your review group will set this up for you, so there's really no reason for you to be messing around with it. But if you go into the properties, you can select things and like deactivate them, and that row will, will suddenly disappear. Oh, it didn't disappear. What am I doing? Oh, well, just a sec. I'd have to highlight it. And now I'll go like that. 
and that row disappears. But you know, I want to keep it there, so I'm going to activate it and put it back. Now, I'm just going to scan down and show you some excluded studies. Both of these studies were excluded because they're not randomized controlled trials. We have a study awaiting classification. In this case, it was a study that was published in Polish with an English abstract, and it needs to be translated. And there's sometimes you'll find ongoing studies. In this case, this study was found on um, the uh, clinicaltrials.gov site, and it's still ongoing. It says the trial's ongoing and still actively recruiting patients. So maybe when it's time to update this review, you may wish to uh, add the results of that study then. And if you, I'm going to go back to my slides now and talk to you about data and analyses. Just bear with me while I pull up the slides. Okay, this slide shows where you open up the data and analysis section of, of Redman in the outline pane. And it's right here. These are the steps that you would follow to create a meta-analysis in RevMan. Step one, you add a comparison. I've already done that. That's drug X versus placebo. Then you would click Add Outcome. You would specify the data type, whether it's dichotomous or continuous. You would specify the statistical method, such as inverse variance or Mantell-Hansel. You would specify an effect measure, such as risk ratio or an odds ratio. You would specify an analysis method, such as fixed effect or random effects. You would specify the analysis details, such as totals and 95% confidence intervals. And you would also specify how you want your graph labeled, you know, the labels for the left and right-hand side of the forest plot. Then you add any subgroups, if you have any. Often we add subgroups for dosages. Then you would add your studies. And then you would enter your data. This slide shows you the data entry and statistical analysis feature of Redman 5.1. All you need to do is enter the data extracted from your analyses, and Redman automatically performs a meta-analysis and creates a forest plot right over here of that data. And you, there's a range of statistical options that are available, so you can tailor the analysis to, you know, to your review. I'm going to do a demonstration of this in Redman now, so if you just bear with me, I'm going to pull up the review manager. Okay, so just hang on a sec. I'm just closing all these things up. I'm going to go to data analyses. I've already set up the comparison, drug X versus placebo, but I'm going to add an outcome. So I right-clicked on the comparison. I'm adding an outcome. This outcome is dichotomous. It's going to be failure to improve clinically. I'll click Next. I'm going to use Mantel Hazel, Hansel. I'm going to calculate a risk ratio. For now, I'm going to try a fixed effect model. Or wait, why not? We'll try random effects. We'll go Next. I want totals and 95% confidence intervals. Next. The uh, left-hand side will be favoring drug X. The right-hand side will be favoring Placebo. Oh, I spelled placebo wrong. Next. And I'm going to click Finish for now. We'll go in and edit this. And by the way, I want failure to improve clinically to come after clinical remission. So I can use the Move Up function to put it to number two. Now I'm going to right click on this. And I have no subgroups to add, so I'm just going to add some studies. In this case, I have data from all three studies, so I'm going to select them all, click Finish, and now I can enter my data. So for ITO, and by the way, you go in between these boxes using the Tab button. So ITO is 30 of 65, tab it over, 35 of 40, tab gets me down to McDonald, that's uh, 29 of 40, and then uh, 21. Of 37 down to Sheryl, which is 80 of 167, and 64 of 83. Now, as you can see, it produced a meta analysis 
on the side there. And I'm using this little tab at the bottom. I can change the scale on my forest plot to make it uh, to emphasize things or to make it easier to look at or read. Let's have a closer look at this for a moment. I clicked on that forest plot button there, and I have a picture of my forest plot. Now, what we have here is quite um, confusing. Well, not confusing. Whoa. Wow, this isn't what I attended. 29 of 40. Just hang on a moment, please. I'm sorry about this. 29 of 40. 21 of 37. 30 of 65. 31 of 40. 80 of 167. Oh, <laughs> 64 of 133. That looks a little better. Now, again, we're going to have a look at this forest plot. I'll note right now that uh, the chi-square value is statistically significant, and we have an I-square of 88%. There's something really kind of kooky about this analysis. Um, I'm thinking that it's probably the McDonald study. And if we look, I'm just going to show you something quickly. Just going back to risk of bias here and the characteristics of studies. I'll note that the McDonald study entered patients with moderate to severe condition Y, and also that this study has a high risk of bias for a number of items. So I'm thinking to myself, if we go back to the analysis here, that the McDonald study was probably contributing to this heterogeneity. So why don't we look at it and find out? If I unclick McDonald here, I'm basically doing a sensitivity analysis. I'll pull this up, and lo and behold, I now have a statistically significant benefit, and the I squared is 0%. Now, in real life, you probably wouldn't have things so, so cut and dry, but I just showed you how to do a simple sensitivity analysis. So there's a few other things you may wish to do here. For example, if you were going to calculate the number needed to treat, you may calculate the risk difference. So you can go and change your analysis from from the relative risk to risk difference or odds ratio. You may also want to change it to a fixed effect model from random effects. And you could also, if you were looking for publication bias, do a funnel plot analysis. I'm just going to click on that now. Now, keep in mind that if you're going to do a funnel plot analysis, you should usually have about uh, 10 studies as a rule of thumb. Anyhow, I'm now going to return to the slides and talk to you about a few more RevMan features. So just bear with me, please. This slide shows where you add figures in the content plane. Of course, you can also add figures from the outline pane. A figure must be linked in the text for it to be published. You can select important forest plots and add other figures as well. I'm just going to do a brief demonstration of RevMan because I see I'm going rather slowly here. So let's go back to RevMan. OK, in RevMan, we're going to add a few figures now. One of the first figures that are usually included in our reviews, and it's going to figures here, add, would be a study flow diagram. So I'm just going to add that right now and take you down to look at it. Study flow diagram really just shows you know, how many hits you had with your literature search and explains how you, know, you came down to the decision of to what to include in your review. You can edit the figure by clicking on the boxes, not having much luck here, edit figure. OK. Now I click on the box, and I could enter the number of records. 8,000 records were identified through our database searching. And then you go on and describe the different steps here. Let's add a risk of bias figure, too. So I can add a figure. I right-clicked on figures, went to the menu, then I could do a risk of bias summary. Click Next and finish, and it's going to show you what it looks like. There's nothing for Sheryl here, and the reason, of course, is because we didn't complete the risk of bias table for Sheryl. Maybe I should just show you quickly how to do that. So I'm very quickly assessing the risk of bias here. Now, the table itself on the figure won't work unless you have text in here. So I'm just going to do a quick copy and paste. Control C, text. So I right click in the text and paste, right click, paste, 
right click paste, right click paste, right click paste, right click paste. Now let's go back down to the figure and I'll show you. We now have the summary for Shurl. I'm just going to add one more figure and we're going to go back to the slides. So figures. I think that figure from the uh, clinical improvement is pretty important. So I'm going to add a force plot here. So failure to improve clinically, click next and finish. And that's what your figure would look like. And you note here that McDonald doesn't, it shows the uh, risk ratio and everything, but it's not actually part of the force plot over here. So I'm just going to save my work. And now I'm going to go back to the slides. So bear with me here. Oh, sorry. Appendices. Redman 5 will allow for the addition of supplementary material on appendices. This is usually used for stuff like detailed search strategies, data extraction forms, or maybe additional statistical methods that are used in a review. Now I'm just going to show you some final steps. Just uh, hang on while I uh, bring up RevMan. OK. So you know what? I'm just going to, um, I'm checking this review in, and I'm checking another one out to show you the rest. Basically, once you've done writing your review, and you're ready to submit it, you should do a validation check. So just hang on. I'm going to check out a review here that didn't have Oh, you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to check out this review. I'm sorry about this, folks. Just hang on. OK. I'm just going to go back to the slides for just a moment. OK. If you've written your review, there's a couple final steps. You're going to want to validate it and submit it. There's now, you can validate as you type. Every review should be validated prior to submission for editorial and peer review to make sure all the sections of the review have been completed and meet Cochrane requirements. This slide shows the validate as you type option, which I usually don't use. I'll explain why in a moment. Things that are underlined in red are validation errors. Things that are underlined in in blue are validation warnings. And the please note, validation errors have to be corrected before the review can be published. Validation warnings don't need to be corrected, but you probably should. Now, this slide shows the validation report, which I like to generate as it provides a description of the errors. And then you can also click on a link, and it takes you right to the error in Redman where you're able to uh, fix it. Now, <laughs> I'm going to go back to my slides. Or actually, you know what? This sec. I'm going to go to the last slide on submitting, and then I'll demonstrate both to you. This slide shows the check in button, which I haven't used yet. And this is, you can use this to check in your review. And now I'm going to show you how you uh, validate your review and submit it for editorial and peer review. So bear with me while I go to the uh, Redman. OK. So let's validate this review here. I go to the File menu, down to Reports, and Validation. Now this review has two errors. It says study data must be included in analysis. So I'm just going to check on this and go to that error. And here you go. I note right now that these two studies aren't checked in the analysis. Let's see if that corrected the error. So I'm going to go File, Reports, Validation, and now there are no errors. We don't really have much time, so I'm not going to go through any warnings. Basically, I'm going to save my work, and I'm going to submit this review for editorial and peer review. So let's just use the check-in button for, for fun. We're going to check it in. So a version description for editorial review. I'm going to click Next. And I want to submit it for editorial approval, so I click the box. Next. Do I see a report? No, I don't want to see the validation report. We've already seen it. Now I just check off these things here. 
Have I checked that the list of authors is complete in correct order? Yes. Have I checked that the dates have been updated as appropriate? Have I moved old events from what's new into history? Have I checked additional items on the review groups checklist? Not all groups use this, but you should check with your review group. Now I click Next, and I can also add a message to the review group. Here is the draft review. I hope you like it. Now I click Finish, and now your review has been submitted to your review group for editorial and peer review. Please note that once you do this, your review is locked in the editorial stage, and you will not have access to it. That's basically my presentation. If you want more information, you can contact the managing editor of your review group. This here is just the, where you can download Redman. And if you have any questions, you can also email me. I'd just like to take a moment and acknowledge uh, people that uh, have had slides that I you know, adapted slides from. That would include Liz, Veronica, Elizabeth, Adrian, and Miranda. Thank you all. And uh, thank you very much. And are there any questions? Uh, we can now have questions through the chat room and or talk. And I'm able to stay for another half hour if anyone has questions. And I can also email you if you want to email Hi me. Hi, everybody. Thank this you. is Erin. John, thank you so much for presenting today. Can I please ask everybody to send a round of applause through the chat room? Thank you very much, everybody. You're going to be seeing in the chat room in just one moment a link. This link is to our evaluations. I'd really appreciate it if you would take a moment to, uh, to complete that evaluation. Again, the link has just come through the chat room there. We'd really appreciate that. We'll also be sending out the slides to everybody who's participated. So all of the slides that John showed today, you'll have a link to those. In addition, a month or two from now, you'll be able to find this webinar, the recording, so the audio and the slides, will be available on the Canadian Cochrane Center's webpage. So while we're waiting just a moment for everybody to, uh, to applaud, to send through any questions, um, we'll just give a moment for, uh, for you to type in any questions or concerns that you have. Uh, should I start taking questions? Please go ahead, John. There was one question that I saw coming through the chat room, um, a question that was asked about whether or not you can use RevMan without Archie. I wondered if you could answer that, John. I sure can. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, as I stated in, in, in the, the slides there, uh, you, if you're using RevMan for an academic purpose, such as you want to prepare a meta-analysis or something like that, you, you certainly can create your own review and use RevMan to do the meta-analysis.